Well, good Wednesday morning to you. Uh, it's a little damp out there this morning. We're getting a little bit of rain, so we're grateful for that. We're thanking God for a little shower. Hope we get a little bit more. Could use a lot more, but we'll take a little bit more. And uh, yeah, cooler weather. Yeah. So it'll be a nice day, I think. But we will take the day whatever it is because we have no control over the weather or anything else. So we'll just be grateful for the day. And today we are in Proverbs 2. So Proverbs 2 goes like this. My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. He guards the paths of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. Then you will understand what is right, just, and fair, and you will find the right way to go. For wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. Wisdom will save you from evil people from those whose words are twisted. These men turn from the right way to walk down dark paths. They take pleasure in doing wrong, and they enjoy the twisted ways of evil. Their actions are crooked, and their ways are wrong. Wisdom will save you from the immoral woman, from, her, from the seductive words of the promis promiscuous woman. She has abandoned her husband and ignores the covenant she made before God. Entering her house leads to death. It is the road to the grave. The man who visits her is doomed. He will never reach the paths of life. Follow the steps of good men instead and stay on the paths of the righteous. For only the godly will live in the land and those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be removed from the land, and the treacherous will be uprooted. <clears throat> so, this is the benefits of wisdom. And um, he starts off my child. So this, again, is a father, a father-like figure speaking to his son. Um, Solomon speaking to his children. God speaking to us as his children. Um, but again, it's, <clears throat> it's a loving um, response uh, from a father to a son or a father to a daughter um, trying to guide them in the in the right ways of of living and um, he starts off these first couple of verses with just some action words on our part listen to what I say treasure my commands tune your ears concentrate cry out, ask, search, seek. These are all action words on our part. These are things he's telling us to do, <clears throat> to listen and to treasure these commands, to tune our ears into um, wisdom um, and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight ask for understanding, search for them. And this is in search for them as you would for silver, seek them like hidden treasures. If you knew there was hidden treasure in your backyard, or if you knew there was a treasure somewhere, you would be very, uh, probably very diligent in digging it up or going to find it. Um, and and the father figure here, God or Solomon, both are saying, treat God's word, treat his wisdom in that way. Um, one of the commentators kind of 
kind of hit home for me. He said, uh, the, first, the first illustration he used really didn't matter to me, but he said some people will get up early in the morning to exercise, uh, but they don't, they're just too tired to get up in the morning and look at God's word. Um, I'm not an early morning person. I prefer to study in the evening, but I get his premise. But the next one hit home. He said, some of you will um, set your schedules for your t favorite TV shows. And I know in the fall, we have certain shows each night that we watch. And so we know we have to be in the living room at a certain time. Uh, we'll search and we'll seek those out. Um, but do we search and seek out our time with God? Uh, our time to gain that wisdom, to seek for the understanding and ask for it, to cry out. Um, we can always, seems like we can always make up an excuse not to do those things. And so this is a challenge for all of us, I think, this morning uh, to really, to get after it and, and look for it. It's, it, it takes some work on our part, some effort on our part. Uh, but God, but Solomon then says, then, if you do those things, in verse 5, then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain knowledge of God. <clears throat> and remember back when we started this, uh, this book in chapter 1, verse 7, fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Verse 7, fear of the Lord is is the foundation of true knowledge. He's saying if we'll seek and ask and, and cry out and search, he says, then we'll understand what it means to fear the Lord. We'll understand what it means to, to walk in that wisdom and understanding and um, to stay away uh, from the wrong. He then kind of switches gears and gives things back to God. If we do those things, if we seek things out, cry out, then we'll understand. Then God said, God will grant wisdom. From his mouth comes understanding and knowledge. He grants a treasure of common sense. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. He guards the paths of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. Now, when we have done our part and we have understood, now this is what God does in response to that. And um, <clears throat> it's a, even though we do all the searching and we do all the looking, God grants the wisdom. God will answer our cries. He, will, he won't hide the treasure from us. He will give it to, he grants us that wisdom. Um, it's from his mouth comes the knowledge and understanding. It's from his word uh, comes knowledge and understanding on how to deal with uh, the world around us and the craziness of today. <clears throat> this, this verse, verse 7, he grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. And doesn't our, don't our times need common sense? Um, we were watching the news last night uh, on a story and listening to this, and I just, I couldn't believe. Um, I just shook my head and said, are you kidding me? The lack of common sense in people today. I, I looked at Lisa and said, when, when did we become so dumb? Um, we, we became dumb when we kept pushing God out. We became dumb when we, when we didn't seek God's wisdom and understanding. Uh, when we keep pushing God's ways out of our culture, we become dumber and dumber, and we lack common sense. And so uh, we need uh, to turn around and come back to the source of our knowledge and understanding. Then in verse 9, you will understand what it is to be right, just, and fair. That's what we hear a lot about today. We need to be right. We need to... We need justice, we need fairness. Uh, but the ways we're looking at it are the ways of men and uh, not the ways of God. And when we will seek this book out and when we will seek out the understanding and wisdom and knowledge of God, then we will understand 
what it means to be right, just, and fair. Until then, we're just operating on our own opinions. And our own opinions are going to be different between each other. And so there's going to be conflict. God's ways are right. His understanding, his wisdom is right. And that's where we need to be turning back to. Wisdom will enter your heart. Knowledge will fill you with joy. Um, wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. Um, so these are all the benefits of seeking out wisdom, God's wisdom and understanding and allowing him to grant it to us, to put it into our hearts and our minds. Um, he kind of changes gears now and gives us two examples of what wisdom will help us with. Uh, beginning in verse 12, wisdom will save you from evil people, from those whose words are twisted. These men turn from the right way to walk down dark paths. They take pleasure in doing wrong and enjoy the twisted ways of evil. Their actions are crooked and their ways are wrong. There are some who just twist words make stories up, try to entice us to go down this path or that path. It's the path that God wouldn't have us down. It's the wrong path, but they find joy in that. They find joy in the rebellion and the wrong and the evil, and they try to drag us into it. And their words will be very persuasive. And unless we have the knowledge and wisdom of God, we're gonna get sucked into those twisted words and those lies and those evil, those evil ways. He says, wisdom will also save you from the immoral woman, uh, from the seductive words, the prom from the promis promiscuous woman, those seductive words, those words that um, draw us in and, and tell us the things that we want to hear. The, um, another uh, way, a uh, comment, a flattery. Um, telling us lies, but we believe them. And when we do that, we, we begin to follow the ways of this, this woman. And it says she has abandoned her husband and ignores the covenant she made with God. Uh, she's abandoned the love of her husband. She no longer cares about that promise she made to him. And she no longer cares about the covenant she's made before God in this marriage. And she abandons them both. Uh, for other men and for other fun and for other... And, and if we enter her house, it says, it leads to death. It's the road to the grave. It takes us away from God and into the ways of the world. And, and, and those ways oppose the ways of God. The man who visits her, it, he's doomed. He will never reach the paths of life. And so... Two different groups of people, men with evil, twisted words, seductive women. The world all around us is trying to pull us into their darkness, into their evil path, into their vision and definition of fun. We need to be seeking out and searching the word of God for his understanding and his wisdom so that we stay on the right paths. Verse 20, follow the steps of good men and women instead and stay on the paths of the righteous. Follow the steps of the good men and women. Those are the ways that we walk. And we'll walk, we'll follow those good men and women because they're listening to, to God. They're seeking out his wisdom and understanding. And we will have people to follow. Look for the good people to follow. Uh, for only the godly will live in the land and those with integrity will remain in it. Um, only those who live in, in, in obedience to the wisdom and knowledge of God will live in the land, the promised land, but also the land of eternity in the presence of God. But the wicked will be removed from the land and the treacherous will be uprooted. Uh, there will be no sin. There will be no uh, twisted words and seductive words. There will be no uh, wrong paths in heaven. Um, Jesus is taking care of all that. And only the godly uh, will walk and live in that land. 
And the godly are simply not better than people. They're people who listen to the understanding and the wisdom of, of God and choose to walk with good people. They're not better than anybody else because it's God who grants that wisdom and knowledge. We just seek it. And so follow good people today. Follow good um, stories today. Listen to good things today. Be careful of the messages that you're taking in. Um, I know yesterday I did something I haven't done in a long time. I got some new headphones for work to, uh, I don't like earbuds, and they kind of block out some of the bad noise, and I don't have to have things turned up so loud. But in doing so, I listened to the radio yesterday. I didn't just listen to music, and I actually put on some talk radio. I haven't done that for a long time, and I listened to three hours of it. And it wasn't terrible bad, but I could tell by the end of that I'm going, wow, this would be easy to get sucked into this if I listen to this every day. And even listening to them, are they thinking about that? You know, you start to, and then you're thinking about all these things that you're, they're not God's ways. It's not God's wisdom. It's not God's truth. And so be careful what you're listening to. Be informed, know what's going on, but be careful what you're listening to. God's word and his understanding will lead to justice and fairness. So let's seek his word today in his ways. Father, we just again thank you for the word of, uh, of Solomon. We thank you for this proverb but that shares with us the benefits of wisdom, the benefits of your wisdom and your knowledge. So give us a desire today to seek your truths out to seek your knowledge out. Father, hide that in our hearts and in our minds. Hide those truths so that we can be people of right, righteousness, justice, and fairness. Help us to look for good people to follow. And in the process, Father, we will become good people that others can follow. Help us to be a part of that process that will help others to find you and your wisdom and your truth. And Father, we look forward to the day when Jesus returns and we don't have to deal with the wickedness and the seductiveness, the sin and the evil. We will live in a land of peace with you. But until then, Keep us wise, keep us full of understanding, keep us on the right path. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good to see everybody, Bill and Elaine and Sherry. Um, thanks for hopping on this morning. This is our last day. Lisa and I will be traveling tomorrow. So um, we've got Sunday off also. Harriet will be taking care of things Sunday morning, so you can join her uh, for worship on Sunday. Uh, we will be back Monday morning to good Lord willing. And so have a great time. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you when we get back. Love you all. Bye-bye.